about a couple of different places here in the Americas. <clears throat> so, before I reveal that, <clears throat> Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, God. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to speak your words and honor, Father. Take me out of it. It's all about you, God, your kingdom. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Father. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Father. Thine is the glory forever and ever, God. Amen. So peace, everyone. <clears throat> Who? Wow. Okay, so this is interesting. To be on such a journey, to be able to share it with each and every one of you for the kingdom, for the glory, for the gospel. And it's a lot of different energies. I'll say that. Like, woo, spiritual warfare is real. But hey. We walk in Psalms 911, right? So we're going to go with that flow. A thousand will fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand. So even e no point for us getting worried about nothing. Everybody calm down. Okay? Because it's like that. Because we serve a mighty God. Do you hear me? A real God. On top of that, our God's not frozen. Our God's not a statue. Our God is not a trickster. Our God is a mighty living God that has the keys to the bottomless pit, that has the keys to heaven and hell, that knows you and I that forgave us, that sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. We serve a mighty God, the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the same God that parted the Red Sea for the children of Israel when they had to cross over to escape the Pharaoh, and so shall these times come again. I'm assured that the path that I've gone on and the road that I've walked on, I'm, I'm, I'm on the right path. And this is what's so interesting about it because God has given me insight. So I got to share it with y'all because y'all always be my family. Although I am going to switch over to my other channel that God has told me to create. And um, I'll start putting the link to that one in the description box for those of you who are interested. Those of you who've donated to help spread the gospel, thank you very much. And those of you who are interested in donating, look in the description box below. Mainly, importantly right now, I just need your prayers. Okay? Prayers. That's all. Prayers. Okay? Because look. Is deep because every single day <laughs> I get it's funny to me now because it's like I get faced with a demon or something trying to kill me or come at me or hurt me or harm me and it be deep too y'all cuz it's like I be seeing angels like in front of me like blocking death threats and attacks and you know head-on collisions and it's like them demons try it and then they scroll past my car like they posing and stuff and i look at them like it's like they try to scare they do fear tactics and it's deep because it's like god has given me such strength to know that can't none of them touch me they can do all that flexing and all that posing and all they want to but they cannot touch me because look as long as we serve God, and God says what? He who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Y'all, I stay in praise and worship. And if I stay in praise and worship, can't nothing hurt me. Can't nothing harm me. So if I were you, I would highly recommend that you do the same because that's when I ended up with my prophetic languages. That's when I ended up with my prophetic tongues. That's when the Holy Spirit started coming to me and... You know, I was just keeping it real. That's the only thing. It's like, I, I mean, just be real. Don't feel like you have to be holier than thou or mightier than thou. Just say, God, this is who I am. I need help. You know, take me as I am. But how can you use me? 
So many people want to throw darts at me and what I'm doing, what I'm not supposed to be doing. Y'all weren't worried about what I was doing or what I was not supposed to be doing when I was doing tarot cards. So why all of a sudden there was a problem because I'm preaching the gospel. See, this is how I know I'm on the right path. And woe unto those of you who come to against the prophet of God Almighty. The Bible says, touch not my anointing and suffer my prophets no harm. I would be very careful if I was you. And I don't even know why y'all tried it. Because look. Yeshua said there would be those that would come that would do greater works than these. And look, Yeshua didn't strike back, but this is the empire strike back. And we come with grand weapons of Ephesians 6. We put on our full armor and it don't bother us anyway. It's like we already been through all that. Anyways, you're wasting your breath. You're wasting your time. Nothing you say or do can hurt, harm, or injure us because you don't have authority nor do you have the power. So don't be mad. Don't be jealous. Just go somewhere and sit down because you're a distraction. We see you demons. This is spiritual warfare. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over surely goodness. And I mean, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Do you hear me? Forever. So, I mean, all that little mimicking, all you can do is just, you know, keep your words to yourself. Because I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever you say, bounces off me and sticks to you. And you're doing yourself a disservice anyways because the Bible truly says, touch not my anointing. And I'm trying to tell you, you ain't coming against me, but you're coming against the power that sent me. And I'd be very careful if I was you. So, with that being said, for those of y'all who are here to hear the word of the Lord, let's continue on. Okay? So, look. God has shown me, taken me through Arkansas. And he showed me right there where the border crosses between Memphis and Arkansas. There is grand trafficking right there. Grand prostitution, grand sex slave, grand a whole black market of, you know, selling bodies, selling human trafficking. And he also showed me that there will be trucks that will come in and be coming in, military trucks. So they're going to, they're going to, that whole little area is a portal where they're going to be shipping our people out left right left right but there'll be army tanks everywhere and families will be separated from each other children will be separated from mothers mothers fathers grandmas brothers sisters these army tanks these soldiers that are coming for the for god's people god is pleading to you in arkansas god is pleading to you in memphis to repent now what god has shown me for memphis he showed me it applies to the entire bloodline of his people. He showed me how Memphis is stuck in a time loop. Y'all stuck in a time warp. So because you stuck in this time loop, time warp is like this pimping and hustling and basically like, you know, prostitution days. So there, God also showed me there's a lot of aborted babies a lot of family incest in that area um uh, everything is broad and wide and open <clears throat> so that is he kept saying broad broad is the gates of hell but narrow is the gates of heaven so everything there is broad it's like they just laid out a map for y'all and then God showed me that y'all were, the way y'all were funding those houses were through, um, I mean, even the ugliest houses are nice houses. It's like, he was showing me the way y'all funding those houses because y'all was getting checks for them governments and you made them governments, your, your gods. And then y'all got hospitals everywhere because you got them operating on you and you still haven't learned from before. So he's allowed you to be under the punishment of the old covenant. However... He also showed me that the pastors are under great judgment because the pastors have like 20, 
you know, mistresses and wives and people that they're sleeping with. God is just so disgusted because he's looking right at you. But the one thing that has upset God the most is that there is a lot of aborted babies. There's a lot of blood on this land, especially in Memphis and this trafficking area in Arkansas. He showed me that there's a lot of blood a lot of unborn babies tears are crying up to god father how much longer how much longer are you gonna let our mothers get away with murdering us we done nothing to our mothers and they just murdered us they never even gave us a chance to come into this world so god is tired of hearing these unborn babies cry up to him and all and watch this family incest there's a lot of secrets there's a lot of jealousy there's, it's like stuck in a time warp. It's, you're, God, show me where being stuck in this time warp, you become comfortable. Your bloodline has become comfortable to the old covenant. And because you become comfortable to the old covenant, do you realize that when God sent his prophets to that space to give you warnings, that Satan sent the prince of heirs to cause the rains to fall, to call the hail to block your ears so you could not hear. So many could not hear. And then even God allowed it because at this point, the people have become such a stench, such a sin. The people are praising even the pyramids of ancient Egypt and God is upset about it because God is saying when you're saying study commit you're why not study my son why not study my word why not study your relationship with me why is everyone trying to study everything outside of me I'm right here can you talk to me so here it is that God is trying to tell his people to repent, but right in front of God's face, his people are just committing all types of sin. They become used to these big fancy houses that are being funded by the government. Um, and then everyone's just happy just to get money or a check or just to chill to just have something to eat or somewhere to stay. But the main thing about it is that... <sighs> The people have become so comfortable, so much to where they never even put any energy or wealth back into building the land up at all. Because now we're dealing with a whole systemic society where alcoholism has taken place and it has not allowed anyone to really be successful in any type of business so at least 60 to 80 percent of the buildings are closed so it's a big curse there already upon the land and then the people they want to stare you down and everyone wants to look at you and whisper amongst themselves and then it's like a whole area where it's like police are everywhere, just crawling everywhere. But then there are certain neighborhoods where it's like you don't even need no police because it's like whoever's in that neighborhood, you just know that if you try it, like you're going to have something really heavy to deal with. So it's like they police themselves. But at the same time, too, God has also shown me that with these roads and this programming and God's people becoming so comfortable with these big houses and these big homes and just this comfort zone. God's going to take it away from them overnight, swiftly. And this is not just for Memphis, Tennessee. God said this whole systemic of what he showed me for Memphis, Tennessee also applies, applies to all of his people. It also applies to the entire birthright. And this is why he's going to smite the land. He says, he, he says, look at the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, but also the curses also of Deuteronomy 28. If I'm saying that chapter the right, if I'm, if I'm not saying it right, if someone can put it in the description box you know what I'm talking about the blessings and the curses that will come upon you if you obey the laws of God Almighty or verses if you break them is the ones that I'm talking about so here it is God is getting ready to smite the land and the people are clearly ignoring God's prophets or arguing with them the people on the streets that God has put out on the streets they're having to go to jail they're being mocked they're being persecuted um, they're being jumped on um, things are being thrown on them. Uh, they're being arrested. 
So it's already happening. So the same exact thing that was happening when Jesus was around, the same exact thing that was happening when Yeshua was around, it's happening now. Um, even though people want to turn a blind or a deaf eye to it. But I feel that these are God's true soldiers. These are the ones who know, you know, what they're here for. And there is no fear in them. This is like, okay, this is what we got to do. It's time to get out. So I feel like God is looking for more soldiers that he can recruit because God says, I looked and I looked all over to see who can I send. And there was not none that I can send. So I feel like if God has done something for you, I mean, at least tell somebody about his goodness. At least try to get someone, you know, to just turn their life to God because there is a such place as, as hell and the pastors are not telling their churches they're not even the you pastors oh my goodness you pastors are not telling your congregations about hell you're not even mentioning hell in your churches anymore and then on top of that it's always an offering collection and you're not even mentioning the rapture on top of that god is a very 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 upset and i feel like everyone is ignoring god's prophets that are on the streets and it's just like it was in the days of Noah. It's just, and the Bible says it's, it's going to be just like it was in the days of Noah. And um, the three days of darkness is definitely upon us. So hopefully y'all have everything y'all need for the three days of darkness. Pray to God. God will tell you what you, know, you should have. Um, I believe tonight starts um, the seven days or tomorrow. Leave us tonight starts the seven days for Passover. So this is the second Passover for those of you who missed the first one. So God has given you a chance to do the second Passover because you didn't get the first Passover right. And a lot of y'all celebrated Easter. You may have found out later. So now you have a chance to celebrate it starting. I guess it would be by in, in tomorrow at this point, which would be the 15th. No, the 14th of May. No, that would be today. Yeah, the 14th of May. So, um... Mm, I just wanted to drop that on y'all and let you know that when y'all see what happens. To so I'm about to cut this short because I want this video to cut off and run hot again. But either way it goes, I repent. Whoever this message is for, whoever God has given you a chance to hear, I truly realize that if you are under the down in my voice you're very lucky you got a chance to repent stay as close to God as you can and if God is before you who can be against you all right I love each and every one of you be safe you being divine